Thank you very much, uh, Johan, Dr. Kockler, for the kind uh, presentations. I also would like to uh, extend my thanks to uh, you and your team, uh, Marco, uh, for uh, accepting us as a counter partner and also uh, for working with us very closely to the preparations of uh, Indonesia as the official partner country of uh, Hanover Messe. I'm sure uh, all of you know where uh, Indonesia is, but maybe not so much in terms of the, uh, the size, the importance. So my presentation will be uh, coming in different parts. The first part is about uh, Indonesian geography, latest uh, development in political and economic development, and then uh, the new uh, development on digitalizations, and then the last part is uh, why we want to become a kind of official partner country and uh, what we are expecting and uh, what we hope uh, to gain from being in Hanover Messe. I will start uh, with uh, this little map. So you know Indonesia and Southeast Asia, but you don't really know how big the country is, right? So if you put Indonesian map in the US, we are pretty much uh, coast to coast from the east to west of the United States. Uh, if you look at this uh, map in Asia, uh, it's also quite large from Tehran to uh, Kunming. And because we are here in uh, Europe, I put also a layover uh, with European map, and it's quite big more than the EU countries. <laughs> it covers uh, all the way from uh, UK all the way to uh, Sochi, Russia. So we have uh, 17,000 island plus. If you don't believe it, you can come and count yourself. <laughs> we have the second longest uh, coastline in the world. The first one is Canada. Uh, we are a very complex society. We have uh, over 300 ethnic groups. We have uh, hundreds of languages, and uh, we have five major religions in Indonesia, and we have three time zones. And if you fly from the easternmost part of Indonesia to the westernmost part of Indonesia, direct flight will take you somewhere around nine hours flight. Jakarta uh, to Dubai, it's nine hours flight. Jakarta to Tokyo is five hours and a half flight. Berlin to Istanbul is two hour and a half flight. So you, you understand this, the complexity of uh, Indonesia as, as a country. And uh, we have now 265 million populations. We are the third largest democracy in the world and we are the largest uh, Muslim democracy uh, in the world today. We have a very young population. We have 25% uh, of our population under uh, 15 years of age. So this demographic bonus will become a very strong uh, aspect in our economic development uh, in the future. Because it, this means uh, human resources, this means markets, this means uh, new technology will come out from these uh, younger uh, generations. We have a very uh, uh, stable political development in Indonesia. We have just an uh, election uh, last year. Uh, imagine an election in 17,000 islands country. We have over 800,000 voting booths. We have five types of elections and we do it all in one day. And we have over 190 million registered voters and 80% uh, turnout. This is very high in democracy. And we are quite uh, proud to, to organize such a massive election successfully uh, uh, in, in Indonesia. These are the major uh, key indicators of Indonesian development today. We, we have been growing about 5% in the last decade or so. Inflation is under control. Gini ratio is getting better. Unemployment uh, in the early 2000s, it was somewhere around 10%. Now it's gone down. Uh, around five, and if you compare uh, our growth with uh, two other giants in Asia, China and India, 
you see that uh, our growth uh, just quite stable, above 5%, a little bit 5%, and still is 5% uh, today. This is a very interesting graph. Uh, this is about our GDP growth. Our GDP was somewhere around here, very low in the 70s. And then in the 80s, is somewhere around $100 billion. This dip is the financial crisis in 98. So if you look at this point, in 98, our GDP was almost the same with the GDP in 1980. But from here, after the political openness, we grew up to over $1 trillion economy in just 20 years. So it shows the resilience of uh, the people of the country and how we bring ourselves to be able to grow uh, this fast and quite this far. Um, we have quite a healthy uh, microeconomic policy. Uh, we have this uh, good investment grade from the rating agency. And um, just two days ago, uh, Moody's also reconfirmed our status as uh, investment grade because of our stability in the macroeconomy, our discipline in the fiscals. Uh, and if you're looking at what is going on around the world, the trade war, the slowing down of economy, uh, we are still above 5%. And thus and therefore, uh, we are quite stable in terms of investment grade. Uh, Johan mentioned about our size uh, in ASEAN. We are the largest. Um, this is the long view of uh, what Indonesia would be in 2050. And uh, we hope with uh, uh, economic development that we have today, we will continue in, in the stable economic development that we will be able to achieve that uh, directions. Now, digitalizations. Um, we have uh, a huge number of internet users and it's increasing very fast. We have uh, increasing use of uh, mobile phone. People are getting more and more connected in Indonesia. And the number is really, really uh, very strong. These are the five sectors of internet economy in Southeast Asia. You have the e-commerce, you have the ride hailing, you have the travel, you have the fintech, you have the media uh, online. This is the five big sectors. This is a recent report but done by uh, Google Temasek uh, in, in Singapore. And the number is quite really, really uh, amazing. So we will grow in Southeast Asia. By 2025, we will grow up to $300 billion. This is the predictions. Uh, we have now at $100 billion. And Indonesia is on the top. In the uh, internet economy, uh, compared to Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam, we are on the top. In the sectors of uh, e-commerce, on the top, online travel on the top, online media on the top, ride hailing on the top. Uh, on the uh, investments of unicorns, out of 11, five are from Indonesia. And one, uh, Gojek, is now Decacorn, and the CEO has become a minister of education, and it's just coming from the next, uh, last uh, government. We have uh, the e-commerce also, Indonesia is sitting on the top in Southeast Asia. We are also looking in the context of the online media, and this is also combined with the fact that we are uh, the third largest democracy, so we have a huge, huge amount of online media uh, across the country. Uh, if you look at the online travel as well, uh, we have 260 million populations, but domestic tourism is now around 280 million uh, tourism. So we have some concerns about uh, reduction of tourists due to the coronavirus development, but we have a domestic tourism that is also very, very uh, strong. Uh, ride hailing, of course, uh, is on top in the regions. So FinTech as well, we are moving at a, a very fast pace uh, these days. So this is a very important aspect in terms of uh, digitalizations, in terms also of the 
industrializations because then we have a really, really strong uh, young group of talents uh, across the nations to work on different aspects of digitalizations. We plan to bring around 25 uh, startups uh, for our delegations coming uh, in the Hanover Messe in uh, April. Now, we are looking at ourselves in 2045, we will be 100 years, we will be our centennials. So where we are at, uh, how we are going to achieve that is already on uh, our mind. And these are uh, some scenarios where we are going in the next, uh, 100, in the next uh, couple of years when we have already our age uh, 100 years. Uh, this is the target and uh, these are the drivers industrializations, digital economy, and high value product. And all those trees need to have uh, a great aspect of sustainability and environments uh, in, in its, uh, all of the aspects. I was speaking in Davos uh, a couple of weeks ago. We were talking about uh, the cooperation between Indonesia and Germany in the uh, neutral carbon uh, industrial developments. We have been discussing with Germany on uh, investment from Germany on what they call green infrastructure investment coming up uh, to Indonesia. We are talking with KFW Bank. So uh, we really are looking at uh, industrialization that is also uh, giving high value, bringing digital economy as well as taking into account sustainability and the uh, environment. Now, uh, as Johan mentions, uh, 4.0 is part of the important tools for Indonesia in achieving the industrializations. And that's why we have uh, established a new roadmap of Industry 4.0. And we are looking at five different priorities in the different sectors uh, for the uh, 4.0 development in Indonesia. Uh, food and beverages, of course, electronics, Automotive, that include the electric vehicles, that includes the autonomous vehicles. Uh, we have the uh, great German brands in Indonesia already, uh, Mercedes, BMW, MIN, and we hope to have uh, new cooperation with Volkswagen uh, this year. We have been discussing with different industry in Germany on the lithium battery, for instance. Indonesia has the highest number of nickel in the world and we are now uh, looking at the downstream investments that will develop a battery. And also, we are working with a number of German industry on the recycling of battery. So we are not only looking at the making of uh, battery, but also recycling of uh, battery. So that also means that uh, the aspect of the chemicals is also very important in the context of uh, our 4.0 uh, transformations. Where we are today, we have uh, a couple of lighthouses uh, in Indonesia. There are two of them. Actually, uh, uh, of the ASEAN countries, the two lighthouses of full uh, 4.0 industry are only in Indonesia, not in other uh, ASEAN uh, countries. So we are quite happy uh, working with the uh, different global industries uh, on uh, moving ourselves forward to transform Indonesia into 4.0. This is our, uh, our uh, tagline. So it's making Indonesia 4.0. We are not yet uh, 4.0, but uh, even in the world of 4.0, I I believe that there are certain industry that should not be 4.0. For instance, if you make a submarine, you don't want to do 4.0. You make a fregat, you don't want to do 4.0. If you do crafts works, uh, you don't do 4.0. Some of our economy, of course, we want to push to 4.0. Uh, but of course, we understand uh, Indonesia with different diversity, different cultures, different ability of uh, talent of different people. So uh, we will push the majority of the industry, but some will remain uh, in the crafts uh, industry as well. The uh, further tagline is connect to accelerate. So connect with the world, connect with investors, connect with technology, 
connect with uh, human resources, connect with all of them to accelerate our economic development, to accelerate our transformations uh, of uh, industrial uh, to 4.0, and also uh, accelerate to achieve what we believe what Indonesia should look like uh, when we are 100 uh, years old. Uh, we have five objectives here in Hannover Messe. Uh, we want to showcase the accomplishment, what we have done, uh, on which area that we are already 4.0. We also want to attract uh, partnerships uh, in terms of investment, technology, and capacity building. We also want to showcase uh, our startup. You see the evidence from the digital economy uh, that is growing so fast, and the fact that Indonesia is the dominant force in Southeast Asia in terms of digital economy uh, today and I believe it will remain so in years to, to come. Uh, we want to have a market penetration for our products to Germany, EU, and also the world. And of course, uh, we basically want to tell the world that Indonesia is really open for business. Uh, we will have, uh, we are curating 173 exhibitors. Uh, as of today, we have confirmed 141 exhibitors. There will be 23 startups, and uh, the final number we will uh, uh, share with you, but it will be somewhere around 150 uh, exhibitors. Uh, there will be presentations uh, from our site on the roadmap and how uh, the global industry can work with us in strengthening and, and, and accelerating our uh, roadmap, and of course, uh, the new policies, the new government policy that attract uh, more investments uh, in Indonesia. Uh, I'll give you, for, ex for example, if you are investing in Indonesia and you are creating a vocational school, and there will be a tax deduction, super deduction, uh, up to 200%. So this will be presented as well as a policy, as a, as a political development, if you will, uh, Jochen. Uh, in Indonesia, they would hopefully attract uh, more investment coming to uh, Indonesia. So. We have a high-level delegation coming in. We, ha we had a, our president uh, will be here. We have a strong ministerial delegations. Uh, we have at least five uh, ministers will come to Hannover Messe around with the president. We are ready uh, to embrace the technology, the partnerships, and also we are very much ready to explain ourselves what do we expect and what do we like to achieve and uh, we really hope that this will become a successful event for Indonesia and as well as for uh, Hannover Messe. So once again, thank you very much, uh, Jochen, for the opportunity uh, that uh, you have decided to give us uh, the chance to present ourselves in this uh, greatest event of industrial uh, show uh, in the world. So once again, uh, thank you very much. And also thank you for coming uh, to, to hear myself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador um, Havas. I actually have one, one quick question. What, what was really striking to me is that um, the, the um, target is, the objective is to be one of the four biggest economies by 2045, yes. 2050. Yeah. Um, what role will manufacturing actually play in that? Or can you just maybe see it in percentage or in, in that direction? Now it's 23% okay. uh, manufacturing. So. We are looking at around 60 to 70 percent. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Great. Uh, yeah. And the starting point will be Hanover Messe. Great to have Indeed. you here. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for being here. Thank, Thank you. you.